Being a single mom and doing it all by yourself is brutal. Learn the brain and energy tools to get back to your center and overcome your challenges. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Single and Doing It All. This is your host, Muriel Felous. And tonight, I mean today, I have a wonderful episode for you because we're going to talk about how you react to expected and unexpected events in your life and what impact your reaction has on your reality. I'm going to give you two ways to examine, to discover maybe not how you react to unexpected because you I'm sure you know that you're not crazy. You can feel if you react positively or negatively when it just happens. But I'm going to give you two ways to discover what re automatic reaction you have associated with certain areas of your life. Because we all have a set point as far as how we perceive a certain area of our life. And that's extremely important, even crucial to know Because based on that set point, you will know if you're going to create something positive or something negative on an unconscious level. And as you know, if you've been listening to me for a while or if you've been in self-development -de for a while, our subconscious um, reaction <clears throat> is 95% of the time. 95% of our decisions, our reactions, our actions in life are unconscious. What is, why is it important to know how you react, what you have associated with areas and events in your life? Two reasons, two major reasons. Of course, there are many. But the, the major two reasons are going to determine one kind, what kind of reality you're going to create. The first one is if something unexpected happens, and of course, most of the time when it's something that we really didn't expect and it's something that is challenging, we're going to react with some kind of negative shock emotion. So, of course, that's natural. And when that happens, it will activate the amygdala part of the brain, which is the center for stress, the center for fight or flight, and there is even freeze. And when that center of the brain is activated, the blood flow that usually goes to the frontal cortex, to the front part of your brain, the new brain, the one that uh, makes it possible for you to analyze, come up with resources, come up with ideas, the flow that usually goes there is going to be diminished and instead go to the arm and the legs so you're ready to react to the stress because the brain doesn't make the difference. It's our survival brain reacting here. And it doesn't make the difference between a life and death, life and death threat and something that is just perceived, some kind of stress in our modern life. We, on a physiological level, are reacting in the same way. That part of the brain is activated, redirecting the blood flow and sending biochemical chemicals of stress into our body. And that's not ideal because if it's something that lasts like a few minutes, like let's say, since we're talking about survival brain, in the olden times, we were run after by a predator, <coughs> a cyber tooth. And I apologize, my son is here in my office with me because he's sick and I wanted to watch him. So um, even though he's 15, he's still my baby. <laughs> so... The biochemicals of stress are sent into your body. And if it lasts for too long, all your cells bathe into that biochemical of stress. That's not a good thing for your health. It creates inflammation, it creates disease, 
and really long-term big problems. So that's one of the reasons why it is important to be aware of the way you react. And maybe it's less important when you're talking about unexpected events, if they don't last long. But if it's something negative that is associated with, for example, your finances, because a lot of people have an emotion of stress and worry and anxiety that is associated with money and with their finances. So when it's something like that, that you will have to deal with on a regular basis in your life, because you pay every day, you deal with money every day, you look at your bank account, maybe not every day, but you have to be aware. Well, you will have a low-grade anxiety running behind the surface. That means you're going to be on alert 24-7. And in my case, I don't know if you're like me, but as a mom, I had some a certain level of, of anxiety. Of course, I worked on myself, so I'm better now, but anxiety linked to my kids. So I was always in a mode of alert, in a state of alert, which like I said, triggered some biochemicals of stress in my body 24-7. And then you wonder why you're tired, why you have chronic pain, why you have even, uh, you can't think normally. All that is because you're living on alert 24-7. That's not a good situation to be in. The second reason that is important to consider is that when you're in that state, that emotional state of alert, when your amygdala is activated, you are not as resourceful to find a solution. So let's say you have a challenge that fell on your lap and you need to find a solution. Your brain, the frontal cortex of your brain, the solution finder, will not be as efficient. It will not be as potent. And you will not be as resourceful to find solutions. So that's not a good situation to be in. And if we're talking about an area of your life, let's speak love, for example, where a lot of women that I coach have uh, an emotion of fear or an emotion of sadness associated with that area, which whenever each time they think about love, they go to that negative emotion and their they, they feel a threat, they feel a danger because in their past, it created some pain for them. So their amygdala is activated, they're stressed, and they won't be as attractive because they won't be as themselves because their brain is going to be affected. They won't be uh, vibrating at an energy level that will be a high frequency to attract good things in their life. They will stop on the energy elevator at the floor of sadness or fear or um, pain or any kind of negative emotion. So they're going to be matched with the same kind of situations which are going to reinforce those negative beliefs and um, emotional reaction because they're going to prove to themselves that yes, love is dangerous because they're going to attract a situation where love will be painful again or love will create sadness again. So you see, it's even a vicious cycle. So it's in your hands to have the power to break that cycle, but it requires awareness. So for each area if we're not talking about a specific problem and um, or if you're talking about a recurring situation even let's say we're talking about single moms we're talking here two single moms um, a recurring situation of a child who's getting bullied or a child who's ditching school you immediately as soon as you think school you're going to be in an emotional state of wanting to protect your kid, of being anxious, and you will have that association in your brain. So you will be reacting on autopilot every time you think about school. Now, to know 
if you're not sure what your association is at any at, uh, regarding any subject, or although most of the time we know, but regarding any area of your life, that's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more confusing. Uh, let's say your career. You don't know what emotion is associated with your career in your mind. The way to determine, the way to excavate your belief and your association, the way to examine is to sit in a quiet place. I'm going to give you the first way and the second way. And um, sit in a quiet place. Close your eyes and think about that thing. Think about your work. Think about your career. And then become very, very, very present in your body and see if there is any constriction, contraction, if you feel any change, anything from head to toes. Scan your body and see what you feel. On a physical um, uh, angle, if you have a negative association, you will feel something, but it may be very subtle. So be very patient and don't expect something big, like suddenly you're going to have, I don't know, your heart is going to start beating faster, although that can happen. But it may be something very subtle, like a lot of people experience a tension in their neck and shoulders when they are in stress. Other people I experience personally in my um stomach and solar plexus. I feel a contraction. I feel something that I don't like. It can be in your intestines. It can be in your legs. I had clients who were feeling, who were feeling some kind of low-grade headache suddenly. Pay attention to your physical reactions and you will know. If you feel okay, everything's fine on the first level, you know the association is not necessarily negative. But if you start feeling what I just described, that's a sign that something is negative. So if it makes sense, just let me know. Put a comment here or even put the symptom if you feel like it. If you know that you have a certain area of your life where you constantly struggle, like despite your best effort, you can't change that situation or it just improves a little bit and then you go back to the same status quo. A lot of people regarding their finances, they go, even if they can put some money aside, something happens and they have to pay for a repair or something they didn't expect it and they go back to the same level of saving. That's where you struggle. That means you have a block there. What do you experience? Just share with, with, with us here. I shared my past anxiety regarding my kids. Um, anything that you notice like that is, is worth writing down and working with tapping. And that's probably what we're going to do in the watch party because this is one of the most powerful technique ever created and it works very deep and it works fast and it rewires your brain and it changes your uh, nervous reaction and your nervous associations. The second way you can discover if it's something negative or positive when it is not that obvious. Let's say that you did the first exercise and you didn't notice any kind of change in your body. You scanned it, but you're not very used to be in your body. So you're not very uh, attuned to what you usually feel. That happens a lot. I, I teach a lot about getting back in your body. I had to learn that for myself. Uh, I think I started really working on that two years ago and discovering that most of the time I was not in my body. I was... Um, I was even coached for uh, public speaking and for my business. And the coach, as soon as she heard me talking, she said, you're not even in your head, you're above your head. Your, your awareness, your consciousness when you speak is there. So you have to sink back into your body. And I teach that to women also to reconnect with the feminine energy and to reconnect with your 
inner sexy. It even had, it even has um, an impact on that. But that's another subject for another day. So in case, and I know I'm going very fast. I'm very passionate about what I'm talking about. So I'm going to slow down. I apologize. Let's take a breath. <sighs> Let's get present back in our body. And now I can continue. My uh, energy is much more peaceful. The second way is to take a piece of paper, I would say a notepad, and a pen. And you will start a timer for three to five minutes. And you will write, your pen will not leave the paper for the entire time. This exercise, uh, I give it to my students. I, I do it with my clients. It's also very powerful. Because what happens is that at the beginning, your conscious mind is going to start um, filtering what you're writing. But then when you keep writing on, writing and writing and writing, what comes on the paper is what's under the surface. And soon enough, you will discover some subconscious beliefs that you didn't even know you had. Most people are very, very surprised. And what we do in coaching, so they do the exercise, and then with whatever is a block, we tap and work on it. So do that for three to five minutes and start with the prompt. Um, let's say you're talking about love. You're going to start with the prompt, love is. And every sentence you're going to start again. You may want to write love is at the beginning of every sentence. You don't need to. You can just think it. Love is, you write, love is. Each time you finish a sentence, you go back to love is. You can do that with money is, health is, uh, work is, my career is. Um, any area of your life, my spirituality, my spiritual uh, life, uh, God is, also to know what notion of God you have, anything really. And then you read what you found and you will be surprised. And if you do the exercise, actually, come back and put a post here if it, this is not something too personal. And let us know how surprised you were. What did you find? Some people did, did that exercise with me, my clients, and in some cases, everything was mostly positive. So we know there is no problem there. We can leave it as is. Because thank God, we also have very... Positive, self-supporting beliefs and patterns and what I called subconscious programs, which is um, an accumulation, not an accumulation, the sum of your beliefs and your, your um, behaviors associated with a certain matter or the sum of your beliefs and your, be your coping mechanism the sum of uh, the model you have for that specific topic, let's say what model of love do you have, et cetera, et cetera. Some are very positive. Most of our life is going well, except when we are in a time of crisis, which is, in most cases, I, I would even say in all, a call for healing from our soul. And that's when everything crumbles at the same time. Uh, a few years ago, I had, I was bullied at work. I was getting out of a very difficult breakup and I had a health problem all at the same time. I thought I would crumble. I wanted to stay in bed and sleep all day. <laughs> so that's when I knew that it was really some kind of a spiritual initiation, a call for healing. And when you address that call for healing, your life improves. It's like removing the leaves of an onion. Little by little, everything becomes better. And I prefer saying an artichoke. You know why? Because I'm French. So I love artichokes with the Dijon mustard sauce. Delicious. And because in the artichoke, you eat the leaves and the best is in the middle. So that's the same thing in life. As... Um, as much as you remove the different layers, the different blocks, it becomes easier and easier and easier, both in what you are going to create as your reality 
and mostly in your perception. And you're not going to react the same way at all. You'll be more peaceful, more centered, more able to cultivate the connection with your soul, etc. So do that exercise and let us know what you found. And by the way, if you love what I'm talking about, if you appreciate it, send us some hearts, some thumbs up. I love those. And it lets me know that I help you. It gives me a message that what I'm talking is on target and that is something you need help with. In the future, if you have a topic that you would like me to cover in this, in this podcast, don't hesitate to let me know. If you attend on Facebook, send me uh, a comment. If you don't want it to be visible, do a private message or you can always visit my website and send me an email from there. That's it for tonight. I really wish you a great, um, how do you say, excavation of your beliefs, a great discovery session, a, a great self-discovery session. I'll see you next week. Have a wonderful week. Mwah.